Right, again, good afternoon and welcome to the Eagle Circus. Now, the bird I have on my arm here is called a black kite or a forktail kite. Now, why they call them black kites, I have absolutely no idea because they're in fact brown. But they do have a fork in their tail which gives them their second name. Now, this particular species of bird of prey is one of Australia's most common variety. They're found all over Australia, but mainly in the northern parts. If you travel up to places like Darwin, Cunanara, Derby, you can see sometimes groups of up to two or three hundred of these birds flying around together. In fact, they're about Australia's only bird of prey that regularly gathers in large groups. Now, very quickly, we'll just tell you a couple of things about birds of prey. Birds of prey use their feet to grip and kill their quarry, not their beak. In fact, this big hook beak, although it looks pretty dangerous, it's actually got less bite power in it than a budgerigar. <laughs> that big hook bill is designed for ripping, not for biting. So there's virtually no bite down power in it. Feet are a very different story altogether. Very, very powerful muscular feet tipped with sharp black talons. Now to give you an example of the strength that a bird of prey can exert with its feet, the wedge-tailed eagle has been documented exerting in excess of two tons of pressure in its grip. Now that works out to be about 500 pounds of pressure per tip of each talon. But the only time our birds will ever use that tremendous power is when they're actually killing their quarry or defending themselves if they're terrified. You can actually carry a big wedge-tailed eagle on the glove like this and it won't use maximum grip just to sit on the glove. Thank God. <laughs> now the most amazing feature of our raptors is of course their phenomenal eyesight. Most people have heard the old saying eagle eye or hawk eye. Well it's very, very true. The birds of prey have eyes that are approximately two and a half times more powerful than the human eye. <laughs> now to give you an example of that, if this bird could read and it wouldn't surprise me if this one could. <laughs> she could read the headlines of a newspaper over a mile away. Wow. Now, birds of prey are also very gifted in having what we call both mononocular and binocular colour vision. So they will see every colour and pattern we are wearing, only these birds see it two and a half times brighter than we do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, kids, unfortunately in this country, our birds of prey are still misunderstood and consequently still persecuted. The Australian wedge-tailed eagle is now classified as the most persecuted eagle in the world. We shot and killed over one million eagles in this country under a government-funded bounty system that lasted over 50 years. Now the reason we shot and killed all these eagles it's because we blame them as lamb killers or sheep killers. Most people have heard this story. We also blamed our wedge-tailed eagles for carrying off cows and horses, <laughs> protecting jumbo jets. I kid you not, you name it, we accused them of it. Now, 20 years ago, scientific studies showed that the wedge-tailed eagle is in fact the sheep farmer's best friend and best ally. Yet unfortunately, even with all the scientific information proving and exonerating our eagles, believe it or not, you can still get a licence to shoot wedge-tailed eagles in every state of Australia except the Northern Territory. That now makes Australia the only country in the world to allow the legal shooting of an eagle, and we have been the only country for over 20 years. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, kids, we really do have a long way to go in this country. So as well as doing large-scale rehabilitation of sick and injured birds, and that's our primary work here at the Eagles Heritage, what we really need to do in this country is educate our public, particularly our young people. Now, we believe the best way to do that is just to bring you and the birds close together. So to do that, what I'd like to do is invite you to come through this gate one at a time, very, very, very slowly over to me. 
Now, the reason I want you to walk so slowly is the fact that every movement we make, even the smallest movements, this bird will see ten times faster than we do. The human eye can only detect one movement per second. The raptor eyes can detect ten movements per second. So everything we do, even in the background, we ask you to do slowly and quietly. Now also when you do come out, we're going to ask you not to have anything dangling around your neck, or tied around your waist or a hat on. Now the reason for this is that the bird sitting on my arm here, although she looks nice and quiet, this bird is not a performing parrot or a trained cockatoo. This bird is a manned bird of prey, which means she is still very much a wild creature. So we go to all these precautions to minimise colours, patterns and movement to minimise any stress placed on this bird. Now also when you do come out, we're going to ask you not to try and attempt to pat or touch our cute little birdie. <laughs> because this cute little birdie will bite and talon you back. She does not like to be patted or touched. In fact, patting or touching a bird of prey could best be described as poking it in the eye. They absolutely hate it. But also what you must remember is that if you pat or touch any bird too often, but particularly a raptor, you can completely destroy the protective oil coating system on those birds' feathers. And over about a five or ten year period, if you continually pat and stroke that bird, every feather on that bird's body will fall out and it will die. So we can actually kill our feathered friends by just being overly affectionate to them. Okay, for those who would like to, if you'd like to line up at the gate and come out one at a time, we have a limited number of people, a limited amount of time. And come out one at a time, very, very slightly over there. Put on the glove and have the bird sit on your the cats to sleep, the gate wide open. So the slower and quieter we go, the more time this bird has to realise that you mean it no harm. Because this is exactly how we do it. Put that up right here. Up this side here, left here. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do this. Ooh. I don't have to do it. <laughs> Now, any bird of prey that you see just or tethered like this is trained and flown using the ancient art of falconry. Now, the whole basis of falconry is a trust animal procedure. We come out at the same time every day with the same colour of clothes, with exactly the same thing, very, very gradually gaining that horse trust. Now, every time we work with our birds, we always give them a nice reward for putting up with us. That reward might be something like a nice big succulent, juicy dead rat, or a chicken or a mouse, something the hawk's really going to enjoy. And quite simply, if you ever try and <laughs> kill a bird of prey in the submission, <laughs> what happens when a carnivorous bird is the hungrier they become, the more aggressive and possessive of food they become, not the kind of tamer. Now, don't buddy, excellent job. Now, can you do me a big favour? Can I get you to walk back normal speed and pass the gun on to the next victim? I mean, who's <laughs> okay, next like to start making your way out? Grab the glove, put that on your right hand, come around the side of your head. Now any bird of prey that is just or tethered must be free flowing every day. They must have approximately 10% of the daylight hours free flight because that is what they would do in the wild. Now with this particular species we actually fly with about a hundred grams of what we would find in the Wonderful, beautiful, cuddleable, kissable creatures. Only one could start the dead one. But the bottom line is we must look after all our wildlife for our future generations. Now don't actually God, and again no blood. Potato, look at the cameras. This way. Do you want to go out now? Mm -hmm. huh? I'm afraid. <laughs> I see enough.